Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Word for word, or not word for word, just word to word. Nandam cha mokshati bhayad varunasya pashad gopan bileshu pihitan maya sununa cha ahni apritam nishi shayanam atishramena lokam vaikuntham upaneshati gokulam sma nandam chamokshati bayad varunasya pashad Gopan bile shupihitan maya sunu nacha. Ah, nya pritam nishishaya namite atishremena. Lokam vaikuntam upane shati gokulam sma. Nandam chamokshati payad varunasya pashad. Gopan bile shupihitan maya sunu nacha. Ah, nya pritam nishishayanam atishramena. Lokam vaikuntam upane shati gokulam sma. Nandam chamokshati payad varunasya pashad. Gopan bile shupihitan maya shunu nacha. Ah, nya pritam nishishaya namatishramena. Lokam vaikuntam upane shati gokulam sma. Vikuntam. Lokam vikuntam upane shati gokulam sma. Please repeat. Nya pritam nishishayana matishramena. Lokam vikuntam upane shati gokulam sma. Nandam chamok shati payad upanasya pashad. Gopan bile shupihitan maya shunu nacha. Ah, nya pritam nishishaya namatishramena. Lokam vikuntam upaneshati gokulam sma. Nandam jamokshati payad varuna sya pashad. Gopan bile shupihita maya sunu namcha. Ahya pritam nishishaya namatishramena. Lokam vikuntam upaneshati gokulam sma.
Nandam ca moksha ti payar varunasya pashar. Gopan vile shupihitan maya sunu nacha. Ahnya pritam nishishaya namatishramena. Lokam vikuntam upaneshati gokulam sma. Mothers? Okay. Word to word translations. Nandam unto Nanda, the father of Krishna. Cha also. Mokshati saves. Payat from the fear of. Varunasya of Varuna, the demigod of water. Pashat from the clutches of. Gopan, the cowherd men. Bileshu in the caves of the mountain. Pihitan placed. Mayasununa by the son of Maya. Cha also. Ahni apritam, being very engaged during the daytime. Nishi, at night. Shayanam, lying down. Atishramena, because of hard labor. Lokam, planet. Vikuntam, the spiritual sky. Upaneshati, he awarded. Gokulam, the highest planet. Sma, similarly. Certainly, my bad. Translation and purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Prabhupada Ki. Jai. Lord Krishna gave His foster father, Nanda Ma... Hmm? Oh, yeah, my bad. Lord Krishna saved His foster father, Nanda Maharaj, from the fear of the demigod Varuna and released the cowherd boys from the caves of the mountain, for they were placed there by the son of Maya. Also to the inhabitants of Vrindavan, who were busy working during the daytime and sleeping soundly at night because of their hard labor in the day, Lord Krishna awarded promotion to the highest planet in the spiritual sky. All these acts are transcendental and certainly prove without any doubt his godhood. Purport. Nanda Maharaj, the foster father of Lord Krishna, went to take his bath in the river Yamuna in the dead of night, mistakenly thinking that the night was already over. Thus the demigod Varuna took him to the Varuna planet just to have a look at the personality of Godhead. Lord Krishna, who appeared there to release his father. Actually, there was no arrest of Nanda Maharaj by Varuna, because the inhabitants of Vrindavan were always engaged in thinking of Krishna, in constant meditation on the personality of Godhead, in a particular form of samadhi, or trance of bhakti yoga. They had no fear of the miseries of material existence. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is confirmed that to be in association with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, by full surrender in transcendental love, frees one from the miseries inflicted by the laws of material nature. Here it is clearly mentioned that the inhabitants of Vrindavan were extensively busy in the hard labor of their day's work, and due to the day's hard labor they were engaged in sound sleep at night. So practically they had very little time to devote to meditation or to the other paraphernalia of spiritual activities. But factually they were engaged in the highest spiritual activities only, Everything done by them was spiritualized because everything was dovetailed in their relationship with Lord Sri Krishna. The central point of their activities was Krishna, and as such, their so-called activities in the material world were saturated with spiritual potency. That is the advantage of the way of bhakti yoga. One should discharge one's duty on Lord Krishna's behalf, and all one's actions will be saturated with Krishna thought the highest pattern of trance in spiritual realization. Omanyana timiran tasya jnananjana shalakaya chakshurun militam yena tasmai shri guruve namaha shri chaitanya manobhishtam stapitam yena bhutale svayam rupa gadamahyam dadati svaparantikam 
Vande hum Shri Guru Shriataf Parakamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavam Shcha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghuna Tanvitam Tam Sajivam Savadvetam Savadhutam Padina Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Visha Kanvitam Shcha He Krishna Karuna Sindho Dina Bando Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Tapta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshvari Brishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Harif Priye Vancha Kalpa Tadipyascha Kripasan Tubi Evacha Patitanam Pavane Pyo Vaishnave Pyo Namonamaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vikasa Swamin Iti Namine Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swamin Iti Namine Namaste Sarasvate Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashtati Deshatarine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasari Gora Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Srila Prabhupada, he... Not Srila Prabhupada, yeah, Jai Srila Prabhupada But um, the Srimad Bhagavatam, this verse It starts out with briefly mentioning the pastime where Nanda Maharaj Krishna's foster father in Vrindavan was abducted by a servant of Lord Varuna. So, in Krishna book, this occurs in chapter 28, titled, Releasing Nanda Maharaj from the Clutches of Varuna. What happens is that Nanda Maharaj, he, he wakes up on the morning of Akadashi. He wakes up very early because he wants to begin his day starting off strong. And he goes to bathe in the river. And when he bathes in the river, he is abducted by a servant of Lord Varuna because this was actually an inauspicious time to bathe. It was not yet the Brahma Muhurta. It was before the Brahma Muhurta. In the middle of the night, it's said to be a, a Tamasic time period. Um, I believe in the hours of 10 o'clock to 2 o'clock, 10 o'clock p.m. to 2 o'clock a.m., if I'm not mistaken. Somewhere around then, these are the hours which are recommended to sleep because this is where material tamagun is most rampant. Not that Nanda Maharaj was ever affected by this, though he woke up well early in the morning, so early that it was within this inauspicious time period. So a servant of Lord Varuna, upon seeing Nanda Maharaj taking his bath, came and captured him and took him to the abode of Lord Varuna. So I'll read from Krishna book. This is chapter 28 again. When Nanda Maharaj was taken away by one of Varuna's servants, Nanda's companions began to call loudly for Krishna and Balaram. Immediately, Krishna and Balaram could understand that Nanda Maharaj had been taken by a servant of Varuna. Thus they went to the abode of Varuna. They were pledged to give protection to the inhabitants of Vrindavan, who were all unalloyed devotees of the Lord. Devotees, having no shelter other than the Supreme Personality of Godhead, naturally cry to Him for help, exactly like children who do not know anything but the protection of their parents. So it's saying here that devotees, they, they call out to Krishna, they call out to Krishna when they're in a fearful situation. Though, a devotee actually, this is, this is only superficial, so to say, because a devotee isn't actually affected by fear, as will be mentioned later in this purport. Srila Prabhupada says, Actually, there was no arrest of Nanda Maharaj by Varuna, because the inhabitants of Vrindavan were always engaged in thinking of Krishna, in constant meditation on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So although the pastime goes, Nanda Maharaj was captured by Lord Varuna, 
In actuality, the whole time he was surrendered under the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He was not actually captured. Um, for Leela's sake, it appears that he was captured and he, he cries out to Krishna for help. Similarly, when the gopis were feeling separation from Krishna, they were actually not in separation from Krishna because their thoughts were constantly of Krishna. And Krishna being different from his name, form, activities, pastimes, thoughts of Krishna is non-different from Krishna. So although thinking oneself separated from Krishna, as the gopis had felt, they in actuality were not in separation. So similarly, Nanda Maharaj and the inhabitants of Vrindavan called out for Krishna and Balaram to save Nanda Maharaj. But in actuality, Nanda Maharaj, he was, he was already saved because he was under the shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So continuing in Krishna book, I am very sorry that my foolish man, not knowing what to do or what not to do, had, has mistakenly arrested your father, Nanda Maharaj. So I beg your pardon for my offense, this, the offense of my servant. I think that it was your plan to show me your mercy by your personal presence here. So this is Lord Varuna saying, I'm sorry that my foolish servant has captured you. Um, you're an exalted father. Nanda Maharaj, your father is so exalted and I'm so sorry for capturing, here. capturing him. Please, here, you could take your father back. It was not Varun, Lord Varuna's intention to um, abduct Krishna's cowherd father. But he's, he's taking this instance, Lord Varuna, he's taking this instance as an arrangement just for him to get darshan of the Supreme Lord. So this is how Lord Varuna sees it. You know, my... My, uh, my servant came and abducted your father just so I can take darshan of you. So in this way, Krishna is orchestrating so many things. He's organizing so many events whereby mercy is distributed in so many different ways. So not, not only did this instance function as a pastime whereby Nanda Maharaj feelingly cried out for Krishna and, and had that, that loving pastime. Not only did it function in Nanda Maharaj's and Krishna's relationship, but it also functioned with, to serve Krishna's and Varuna's relationship. So like this, Krishna, he, he, has a, he organizes a specific activity which performs so many different functions in, in distributing the mercy in so many dynamic ways. So we can see this also practically in our lives where sometimes maybe we're on book distribution and I remember, I remember one day, one of, my, one of my humbly, one of my best days um, where you know, I, was, I was going strong the whole day and right when the day ended, right when we left, it started pouring down rain. So it was as if you know, Krishna like held off the rain for that time being just to facilitate book distribution. Um, there's another instance when we were in Ohio, we went to Ohio for this um, yoga workshop. There's a music festival, they had us do like a bhakti yoga workshop. And obviously kirtan was one of the main elements of that workshop. So after driving all the way to Ohio, we found out that our murdunga was completely like not very usable. After Coming all the way there, we only have one murdunga, and we figure out, this is the, um, the plastic sort of murdunga we have, the travel one. We find out that like the, the, the screws that hold the head, the drum head there, like half of the screws were missing. And this thing just sounded terrible. There was like nuts and bolts like in the murdunga, so when you hit the bass, it made a bunch of rattling noises. It just was not in a good condition. And so we were like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Like... We came all the way here to have this yoga workshop, and our Madunga isn't, isn't performing well. Um, lo and behold, we happened to run into a devotee who happened to be at that music festival, um, Bhakta Paul from Philadelphia, and he really came in clutch. And he just mentioned, yeah, I have a clay Madunga here. And it was like, oh, 
you know, we were, we were I, I mean, I, at least I was so worried, you know, that we didn't have a Murdunga and all of a sudden here's a devotee at this music festival and he has a Murdunga. And um, just like this Bhakta Paul came in clutch so many times in this trip, um, we, before our yoga workshop, we had forgotten to take Bhakta stacks, which is like, you know, we didn't have any Bhakta stacks. We had some in the van though, and we'd forgotten to bring them to the tent. And we were thinking, oh my gosh, what are we going to, you know, I spaced out so hard, what are we going to do? And, you know, Bhakta Paul, he pulls up with his, he's got a Segway with no handles, so he just like, uh, it's like one wheel. You, yeah, electronic u unicycle, right, right. Yeah, it's a crazy thing. So he's like, like riding this thing, like off-roading, he looks like somebody out of Mad Max. And he, he pulls up. He's like, what do y'all need? And, you know, we need these Bhakta stacks, you know. Our event's in 10 minutes, and the van's a 15-minute walk from here, and then 15-minute walk back, and we don't know what to do. Can you please get the Bhakta stacks? And just like that, he, he wasn't mental at all, and he just raced off in his Segway and came back with a bunch of Bhakta stacks. Um, so anyways, the point I'm elaborating on here is that Krishna makes so many different arrangements to distribute his mercy. Um, personally, in my life, um, I came to Krishna consciousness, or I, I met the devotees at a time where my whole life fell apart. It's like every aspect of my life was falling apart, you know. Band broke up, um, I had slipped discs in my back, I couldn't skateboard anymore, and I like lost my identity completely. All my friends were like becoming drug addicts, and I like was fried out with them. Um, my, I had a relative that died. It was so many things. And my girlfriend broke up with me. It's like, you know, everything fell apart. And I suffered for a few months after that. And then I met the devotees. And I appreciated the devotees so much because they were such nice people. And the philosophy really um, spoke to me in my situation. And so Krishna arranged this, you know, I came to Krishna consciousness at the perfect time. Had I met the devotees earlier when I was such a materialist, I still am a materialist, but when I was doing a lot of gross material things, then I, I, I would not have taken up to Krishna consciousness. I'm pretty confident of that. So Krishna makes all these nice arrangements. The other pastime mentioned in this verse, um, in addition to the pastime of Varuna's servant kidnapping Nanda Maharaj, is a pastime, um, it's mentioned that Krishna saved the cowherd boys from the son of Maya. So the son of Maya was a demon named Vyomasura. Vyomasura translates, uh, translates to the demon who flies in the sky. And so this pastime occurs in chapter 37 of the Krishna book. And it occurs right after, literally right after, ki uh, Krishna kills the demon named Keshi, the Keshi demon, which was the, the horse demon who had the form of a horse. I don't know if, I mean, you'll probably remember, but um, Krishna, he just, so many times, he just nonchalantly just kills these demons. And uh, reading that is so uh, invigorating. He takes this horse this horse is agitating him. He's coming at him so intimidating, so huge, magnificent, strong, angry, fierce. And Krishna just grabs him by the legs and swings him like a lasso and chucks him away. The demon passes out, and then upon awaking, he remembers, and he gets really angry again and races to Krishna. And then Krishna punches him in the mouth, sticks his hand like through his mouth and expands his arm so much, and the demon dies like that. Um, so I will read this pastime. It's just a single paragraph. This whole pastime is explained in one single paragraph in the Krishna book. Again, this is chapter 37. Later that morning, Krishna went to play with his cowherd boyfriends on the top of Govardhan Hill. They were imitating the play of thieves and police. Some of the boys became police constables, and some became thieves, and some took the role of lambs. While they were thus enjoying their childhood pastimes, a demon known by the name of Vyomasura, the demon who flies in the sky, appeared on the scene. 
He was the son of another great demon named Maya. These demons can perform wonderful magic. Vyomasura took the part of a cowherd boy playing as a thief and stole many boys who were playing the part of lambs. One after another, he took away almost all the boys and put them in the caves of the mountain and sealed the mouths of the cave with stones. Krishna could understand the trick the demon was playing. Therefore, he caught hold of him exactly as a lion catches hold of a lamb. The demon tried to expand himself like a hill to escape arrest, but Krishna did not allow him to get out of his clutches. He was immediately thrown to the ground with great force and killed, just as an animal is killed in the slaughterhouse. After killing the Vyoma demon, Lord Krishna released all his friends from the caves of the mountain. He was then praised by his friends and by the demigods for these wonderful acts. He again returned to Vrindavan with his cows and friends. So we can see here how Krishna just so nonchalantly kills this demon. And he does it in such a playful mood. You know, Krishna's with his coward boy friends and they're all playing nicely. And, you know, they're playing like cops and robbers, more or less. And this demon is pretending to be one of the coward boys as a thief. And then Krishna just kills him so easily. So, throughout all these pastimes, the devotees, they don't have fear. They don't have any fear because they're under the shelter of Krishna. So, in this connection, Krishna is known as Vita Bhayam, which is uh, name 920... 21 of the Vishnu Sahasranam. Those of you who are watching Bhaktivikas Swami, His Holiness Bhaktivikas Swami's lectures, know that this, this name came up like maybe a week ago. Does anybody know um, the word Vita Bhayam, what, what this translates to, what this name translates to? So we know Bhaya, right? Fear. So, yeah, Vita Bhayam is one who is free from fear. In the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4, text number 10, there's a verse that um, this name could be extrapolated from. Vita raga bhaya krodha man maya mamupashritaha bahavo jnana tapasa puta madbhavamagataha Translation, being freed from attachment, fear and anger, being fully absorbed in me and taking refuge in me. Many, many persons in the past became purified by knowledge of me, and thus they all attained transcendental love for me. So not only is Krishna the one who is free from fear, but he also is the one who frees others from fear. Just as a drowning man can't be saved by another drowning man, but needs a man who's on a shore or a boat to pull him up, Similarly, one who is in fear can't, by sa- can't be saved by someone who is fearful themselves. So in the material world, people are taking shelter of so many people, so many different people, so many different artists, scholars, politicians, all of whom are fallen conditioned souls. And so obviously the result of taking shelter of such people is that further entanglement in this material world continues. But Krishna, being free from fear and attachment, also gives his devotees this fearlessness. Can anybody think of verses that that basically say this, that by taking shelter of Krishna, one could be free from fear? Sarvadama Prityaja Mame Kam Sharanam Braja Ahamtvam Sarva Pape Pyo Mokshai Shami Mashuchaha is the famous verse. This is the besides the Hare Krishna mantra, this is the verse Srila Prabhupada quoted the most times. This is eighteen sixty six. We were talking about this one last night. That um abandon all varieties of religion and simply surrender unto me, knowing me to be the cause of all causes. I will free you from all sinful reactions, O Arjuna, do not fear. And there's also Bhaja Hure Mana Shri Nanda Nandana Abhaya Charanara Vindare. Bhaktivinod 
No, no, no. It's Govinda Das. Praise. He prays. Bhaja hure mana shri nandanandana abhai charanar vindare. Oh mind, please, please just worship the son of Nanda Maharaj. Doing so, one will become completely fearless, abhai. So Krishna is vita bhayam, one who is freed from fear. And fear is a symptom of material life. As long as we're conscious, as long as we're in a material consciousness, we will be fearful. Now, ironically, as Gurumaraj points out in this lecture, people are afraid to let go of material life. So material life itself is fear. Material life is the cause of fear. But to give up material life, one is fearful. So one is afraid of giving up their fear. This is how mental the condition is in material consciousness. How one is afraid to give up their fear. We see when someone gets mental, we meet, we, sometimes we meet um, new, nice, nice young men out there in the world and invite them to the temple and they love the philosophy, they love the prasadam, they love everything about Krishna consciousness. But when it comes to coming to the temple, they, they just, you know, vanish. They stop responding to texts. This is, um, this is because People are afraid to let go of their fear. This is the mental condition. So there's so many things that cause fear in this material world. Um, and there's even fear that is created out of nowhere. Just fear like created by the mind, created out of nowhere. Where the mind somehow trips up on itself and just becomes... Fearful, not fearful of anything in particular, but, but just fearful. But the more we are actually in knowledge, we realize the fear isn't caused by nothing, but it's just caused by um, just being within the nature of the material energy. But yeah, this is, uh, you know, this disorder, anxiety disorder. What is it? Chronic anxiety disorder, something like this. It literally just means fear that's, you know, some... Some people have the misfortune of just having mental difficulties where they just become afraid of absolutely nothing. So, Srila Prabhupada continues. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is confirmed that to be in association with the Supreme Personality of Godhead by full surrender in transcendental love, frees one from the miseries inflicted by the laws of material nature. So, freed from the miseries inflicted by the laws of material nature. So, this is very, this is true, obviously. Although it, it may seem, there may seem to be pastimes which contradict this. Where, such as um, Draupadi, even though having been fully sheltered unto Krishna, sheltered in Krishna, she went through so many tribulations, famous of which is her, the, um, in the assembly, they tried to disrobe her and tried to, you know, reveal her nakedly within the assembly, which was a very embarrassing, very um, terrible situation for her to be in. Similarly, all the Pandavas, they went through so many difficulties. They were in this, this big fire, you know, so many difficulties. They, the whole occurrence of the battlefield of Kurukshetra was very, from a material point of view, it seemed very threatening to their existence. Though it's saying here that to be in association with the Supreme Personality of Godhead, it frees one from all the miseries inflicted by the laws of material nature. How these so-called miseries aren't created by the laws of material nature, but these so-called miseries are yoga maya. Um, so when devotees are under the shelter of yoga maya, then they're said to be in spiritual consciousness. There's two 
kinds of mayas. There's yoga maya and maha maya. So maha maya means the material energy, the material being sheltered under the material energy. Whereas being sheltered in yoga maya is being sheltered in spiritual potency. So as we could see with Nanda Maharaj in the past time where he was abducted by Lord Varuna's servant, he was, you know, maybe seemed fearful, but this only enhanced his devotion, his longing for Krishna and Krishna's hand in saving him. So this is, this is yoga maya. It's not material energy, but spiritual energy. Um, and this, this pushes, well, material, material miseries can also push one to Krishna. So in that way, these are spiritual occurrences. How a practicing devotee may go through so many trials and tribulations, so many difficulties imposed by the material world, but this only influences him and, and motivates him to further surrender in his Krishna consciousness. And in this way, it's a, it, it's a spiritual occurrence. It would be a material occurrence if he was being motivated to do some material activity, but because his motivation is for something spiritual, a spiritual goal, this is spiritual impetus. Though at the same time, even when taking up the process of bhakti yoga, one is not, well, one may not be free from the material energy. So Srila Prabhupada gives the example so many times of the ceiling fan. The ceiling fan may be going, the electricity is rotating the blades on the ceiling fan. And then when you turn the fan off, it's still going. It doesn't stop automatically. But it's still going, but it, it slowly slows down because there's no electricity to fuel that spinning anymore. So similarly, we are in, at least I could speak for myself, in Maya, and coming from material conditioning, lifetime after lifetime, billions of lifetimes of conditioning. And so the fan of the Maya, is, it's going on, it's going around, it's in full throttle. And then once I take to Krishna consciousness, then I stop feeding those material, that material conditioning. I stop feeding my material conditioning, but rather I, I feed um, spiritual samskaras. Just like this festival we had, Janmashtami, it's a, it's a samskara, it's an impression on the mind. So these festivals, they function to um, make deep impressions on our, our mind, impressions on the soul, actually, by which we could develop spiritual attachment. Although, although taking up to this process, we are still affected by the conditioning that we've already accumulated. We are not pure devotees yet. And so we are slowly... Our sinful reactions are slowly burning off. You know, it's still going because there was momentum there. But slowly we're becoming freed from the influence of Maya. So I'd like to read a part of a lecture Srila Prabhupada gave on July 18th in 1966. The example is, just like the electric fan is going on, and if you put off the switch, you'll see the fan is still going on. But that going on will stop because the switch is already off. Similarly, if one dovetails himself in Krishna consciousness, then automatically he'll become a saintly person. Automatically. Because his switch is made off. Just like the fan, when the switch is made off, the current supply is stopped. Now, there was a force of running. You may see that it is running for a few minutes. But it will stop. Similarly, anyone, it doesn't matter what he is, if he puts himself dovetails himself in Krishna consciousness, then he, all his material contamination, will be washed off. Washed off. This is the easiest process. Srila Prabhupada continues in, the ver in today's verse, in the purport. Here it is clearly mentioned that the inhabitants of Vrindavan were extensively busy in the hard labor of their day's work, and due to the hard labor they were engaged in sound and due to the hard day's labor they were engaged in sound sleep at night so practically they had very little time to devote to meditation or to the other paraphernalia of spiritual activities but factually they were engaged in the highest spiritual activities only 
So although the inhabitants of Vrindavan weren't practicing some yoga cities and they weren't meditating all day and meditating on Krishna like this, or even reading scripture all day, they, they were actually in the highest position known in the entire existence of just serving Krishna purely, purely simply. Vrindavan life is very simple life, very simple village life. Srila Prabhupada said that one need not travel farther than a bowl can take him. All these, he pointed to an airplane flying in the sky. His devotee was telling us this. He pointed to an airplane flying in the sky and he elegantly traced it with his cane, the, the chemtrail. And he said that this is all artificial, this is unnecessary. Traveling from one side of the world to the other. All you need to do to maintain this body is eat something to sustain yourself and have somewhere to sleep to sustain yourself and that's it. Other than this maintenance of the body, one should just devote oneself to spiritual activities. And so, bhakti yoga is described when Srila Prabhupada says this, that even though they weren't engaged in all these, this meditation and this extraneous endeavor, they lived very simple lives. Even though they did this, this was the perfection of life. And this is the process of bhakti yoga, simple devotion, simple devotion. doesn't matter what activities you're performing, as long as you're in a consciousness of being a menial servant of Krishna. And there's a common misconception. I haven't encountered it much myself, but I've heard others say to me that there's a common misconception that, you know, oh, we're, we're brahmanas. We don't need to do service. We study. We're brahmanas. And so this is a common misconception in the society of Krishna consciousness that people have so-called brahminical natures and therefore they don't do practical service. But in actuality, we're supposed to transcend our natures. Yes, brahminical nature, that's good, and one should have brahminical qualifications, but at the same time, one shouldn't materially ascribe oneself to that and limit oneself to only doing these Brahminical activities. But Srila Prabhupada said we need to do the needful. We need to do the needful. People are suffering in this material world and no one knows who Krishna is. And it's Lord Chaitanya's process to awaken this dormant love of Godhead. And the practical way we do that is not by sitting alone and chanting 16, or chanting 64 rounds. Srila Prabhupada said you will fall down if you do this. But the real way to awaken dormant Krishna consciousness in the world is by spreading Srila Prabhupada's international society. Because this, in the institutional age we are in, this is our institutional in, whereby we can change the world. So, the Sankirtan movement and our own dormant Krishna consciousness is enhanced by doing practical service. Um, this devotee, Guru Maharaj, glorified uh, a few months ago, I think Jitendriya Prabhu, right, in Chicago. Yeah, he, um, very simple devotee. He takes out the trash every day. He's a Prabhupada disciple. He's, you know, just been doing menial service, serving the temple for all of his Krishna consciousness. And therefore, he's glorified because his mind doesn't want to do anything extravagant. He's just very satisfied in just simple service of just doing the needful. And so this is the right attitude of doing the needful, surrendering one's own desires and inclinations for the sake of the desires and inclinations of the Krishna conscious society as a whole. The, the Upadeshamrita Sindhu, which we are reciting every morning, the nectar of instruction, the 10th verse is... Karma pyaf parito haref priyateya vyaktim yayor jnaninas te bhyo jnana vimukta bhakti paramaf premaikanish tas tataha. So this one means that better than the fruit of workers, the karmis, are the jnanis, those who devote themselves to acquiring knowledge. 
better than the jnanis are ones who engage in practical devotional service. Similarly, Srila Prabhupada, in, in the same spirit, he, he outlined that he outlined the process of Krishna consciousness and the activities an aspiring devotee should perform. He said, there's, he said it in a hierarchy. So first, first and foremost, the, mo the most important element is health. You need to be in good health to do anything. If you're in bad health and if you're a conditioned soul, then your mind is disturbed and there's no chance of you performing spiritual activities successfully because your mind is disturbed. And so in order to, in order to satiate the mind and go on nicely, one needs to be in good health. So once the health is good, then rounds, 16 rounds at least, are next most important. After rounds, then service is next important. And after service, reading is important. Now, all these elements are required. Reading is still required. But the essence of devotional service is not just reading. Now, of course, reading for the sake of enhancing one's attraction to Krishna consciousness, reading to maintain one's faith, this is all Krishna's service. So reading is required because it, it helps us strengthen our faith. And if we aren't reading, then we don't know what we're doing. If we're just performing service, then we may, not, we may have a complete misunderstanding of what we're actually doing. And therefore, over time, we, we may phase out of Krishna consciousness. But service is of the most importance, the service mentality. And it's important that we, we read with a service mentality. We read thinking, you know, I'm a fallen conditioned soul, I need purification, I'm a potential weapon used in the hands of Lord Chaitanya and I need to be polished and whittled. So reading is this process of, of um, building our spiritual accumulation of knowledge. Srila Prabhupada continues in the verse we are reading today. Everything done by them was spiritualized. He's talking about the residents of Vrindavan. Because everything was dovetailed in their relationship with Lord Sri Krishna. The central point of their activities was Krishna. And as such, their so-called activities in the material world were saturated with spiritual potency. That is the advantage of the way of Pakti Yoga. One should discharge one's duty on Lord Krishna's behalf and all one's actions will be saturated with Krishna thought, the highest pattern of trance in spiritual realization. So in the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 9, text 27 and 28, this process is elaborated upon of bhakti yoga and saturating all of one's activities in Krishna thought and spiritually transforming all of one's activities. Yat karoshi yarashnasi yaj druhoshi dadasi yat yat tapasyasi konteya Tat kurushva mar arpanam. Whatever you do, whatever you eat, whatever austerities you perform, do everything in memory of me, O son of Kunti. He's speaking to Arjuna, son of Kunti. And then the next verse, verse number 28. Shupa shupa palerevam mokshaya se karma bantanaihi. Sanyasa yoga yuktatma vimuktoma mupaishasi. Translation In this way you will be freed from bondage to work and its inauspicious and auspicious results. With your mind fixed on me in this principle of renunciation, you will be liberated and come to me. So, this is real renunciation, is fixing our mind, fixing our mind on Krishna is real renunciation. Because we only have so, so much room in our minds. And Krishna is the, the biggest person, the biggest thing in all existence is Krishna. Um, if we want any possibility of filling our minds with Krishna, we need all the room we can have. Um, so right now our, mi our minds may be so cluttered with all these anartas, these unwanted things, these unwanted desires. 
But we need to clear all this and make room for Krishna to reside in our mind. And the mind is situated in the heart, actually, according to Vedic scriptures. The mind is situated in the heart. So when we make room for Krishna in our mind, we're making room for Krishna in our heart. And this is real renunciation because we give up all other desires and just do the needful and surrender to Krishna. So I would like to open this discussion up for questions and comments. If anybody has anything, please. Hare Krishna. Um, so in this, um, in, in regards to the um, aspect of, of here, I mean, in the, okay, this is not the worst, but um, you know, in the purport it stated that, you know, you should always, that Vrindavan Vasis were always engaged in Krishna, you know, consciousness, they were engaged in fully spiritual activity. And I remember that um, back when I was, you know, before I had come to Krishna consciousness, when I would read some of these pastimes, you know, of, of whatever, Ram Leela, Krishna Leela, and I would think it's so wonderful. But then I would always think that why is it that we, who have to also want to somehow become spiritual or something like that, have to undergo so much like, so many rules, so many regulations, so many, it's, it's like, it sounds like a lot boring than what they were, you know, and, and, and you know, why do we have to engage in like this? And, and I, I, I could never like figure it out, like I felt it was like really like, it all didn't add up and it always felt like you were always, you always got the, the, the bad part of the deal, you know, or the more yeah. difficult part of the deal, you know, and things like that. But after, but once you read Prabhupada's books, everything becomes clear, you know, that, you know, then you have sadhana bhakti, you have raga bhakti, and then ultimately, you know, all this morning program, etc., 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 is, it, it's all to, cultivate spontaneous loving devotional service and then once spontaneous devotional service comes then then even a devotee may perform these things out to set an example mm -hmm. but then um, it no longer is is a compulsory thing and they're always Krishna conscious I mean this whole like very clear understanding was just not there it's really difficult and this is one of the things that I never I could not get proper answers to even from other you know, Vaishnav, um, you know, speakers and other things like that, they would speak about all these things and, and somehow our life was so hard, you know, it was like, mm -hmm. you know, so, I'm just reminded of how Prabhupada so, so wonderfully explains these, these things. Yeah. Yeah, and also interestingly, Mayadhanava's um, son, Vyomasura, was killed by Krishna, but Mayadhanava himself was saved because um, he took shelter of Arjuna. And uh, then uh, he built the city of Ind Indraprastha. Vitaprastha, you said? Indraprastha. Indraprastha. They built the city. You don't remember? The Kandava, Kandava forest was burned, um, you know, to, uh, as, to please Agni. Krishna had uh, Arjuna burn the Kandava forest and then Mayadhanava was hiding inside that forest and then he took shelter of Arjuna, Arjuna protected him. Mm. Then Krishna ordered Mayadhanava to build a city more magnificent than that of even Indra's for the Pandavas. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nice. yeah, about that, um, the first point you're making. The, the, yeah. the main point in that is that, you know, um, Vyomasura also had association with Krishna's devotees. Mayadhanava also had association. Mayadhanava took shelter of, of a devotee of Krishna, got saved. Mm. Arjuna, whereas Vyomasura was envious and he got killed. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you're talking about how, like, um, it, you know, one may not understand why when these leelas are also pleasing and people are doing such, or devotees are doing such pleasing activities, why do we have to be so stern? Um, because it seems 
antithetical to the joy of Krishna consciousness, to be stern and follow the regulative principles and perform your sadhana and get chastised when you don't. But um, the thing is, like, rather than having spontaneous devotional service, Raghunuga Bhakti, we have uh, spontaneous sinful propensities. And in order to have any hope of being granted into such intimate pastimes with Krishna, we need to prove ourselves, I mean, first and foremost, rather than spontaneously, you know, our, our nature in this material world is just to do sinful activities, and therefore we need to be a little rigid and stern to ourselves so that we cease from doing those things. Um, and once we show that dedication to performing sadhana, dedication to following the acharyas, doing what they say, then maybe we'll be granted with more spontaneous Krishna consciousness. Um, also, just uh, you, you just referred to when Srila Prabhupada said they didn't, you know, they, they worked so hard in the day that they slept so soundly at night. This just reminds me, um, like Mahotsa Prabhu, he'll be working so hard sometimes, and he's, he's said in class, you know, he said sometimes, like, oh, when I went to bed last night, I, there wasn't a second thought. I mean, yourself too, and, and many of the devotees here just immediately pass out, immediately pass out. So this is actually, uh, this is perfection, because if we're laying down in bed, and we can't go to sleep, we, we're suffering, I don't know, like, staying awake for an hour even after laying down, and that's an hour of time wasted lingering in the mind. And so it's actually perfection to be so involved in service that when we just pass out, you know, you just pass out. Mind doesn't have a second to be in Maya. This is just a little side point. Yes, I'm a little. Sure. Hello. My first question is the quote you mentioned about the ceiling fan and how even when you turn the switch off, it still, it still spins for a little while. Where'd you find that? Um, I actually, I struggled to find that. I'd read it before and yeah, I, other devotees have heard that. But yeah, it's, it's all in the lectures. Yeah, yeah, well yeah, I'll give this exact reference again. This is a lecture on, in New York City on July 18th, 1966. So that lecture. But Srila Prabhupada said it on multiple occasions. He re reiterated this point in this analogy. Um, I found it, there's a, for research in this regard, that you can use the Veda base. It's a website, you know this website? Yeah, yeah. You could search in there, search for keywords, and I found it in this way. Thank you. And then I have one more question. Uh, you, you were talking about how first you need to be in good health because if you're not in good health, then it's hard to perform devotional activities. And then next you need to chant your 16 rounds and then, and then you do service. If, uh, if, if you're in good health and you're chanting your 16 rounds, then when you're engaging in service, what's the, what's the thought of working a job uh, to make money outside of the temple? Well, you could count working a job under being in, in the realm of being in good health. Because, I mean, you need to sustain yourself, right? You need to eat, maybe pay rent, um, provide for dependents, etc. And so this could be said to be in the realm of good health. Maintaining a, the, the, the point of good health is to maintain some sort of... Um, stable material situation whereby your mind is not disturbed so that you could focus on Krishna consciousness. So, you know, you could say, you know, in some cases working a job is of the topmost importance, though the principle is not to work a job is the topmost importance, it's just the situation where that, that's required for good health. Um, that being said, if one does have a job and one does work um, in the karmi world, at least, one should not aspire for extravagant positions in the job, such a, um, you don't want to get, sure, you maybe want to raise, it would 
be better for your family, et cetera. But if that means that you're working 12-hour days and you don't have uh, a chance to chant your 16 rounds, then that's not good. So with, when it comes to working, one just, it's required just because one needs to maintain one's existence. So, so it's back to your point of do the needful, but, but the needful. not more than that. Yeah, exactly, okay. exactly. But when it comes to devotional service, you've got to do more than the needful. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, sometimes devotees go on to the too far end also of just no, this thing is, um, of just like considering health only. So it's important mm -hmm. to know that sometimes it's also you come across, sometimes you just can't figure it out with your health. No matter how hard you try, it doesn't matter. Like you can try as hard as you like. You can go to that doctor, this doctor. Guru Maharaj has so much exhibiting those pastimes of that. Just one doctor to another and just like nobody can fix it. Right. So sometimes it's important to understand that, not to get too absorbed in that and just tolerate it. So that's an important principle to understand along with one's health situation. Mm -hmm. huh? It's too loud, this is weird. So it's important to understand that point, that it is, it is there as an important aspect, but sometimes by either, like, you know, uh, we're, we're either bound to that or Krishna wants us to go through that. So sometimes we just, we take that and we tolerate it and we just go on. Yeah. So it's important to understand that because if you, if you think, okay, my health has to be perfect, then you're also in illusion to some right. thinking, oh, okay, everything has to be perfect before I can chant my 16 rounds. That's Nothing's illusion. Ever, it's, health is never perfect. Yeah. So it's important to understand that. And if you're in good health and you have good, good ability, and best to just go to the farm instead of work a job. Yeah, Go to the farms when they start. Go to the farms and work there, work in the mission of Srila Prabhupada. You don't have to work a job. You know, you don't have to stay in this Uga Karma society. Yeah. It's not, it's not, oh, I have to do it. This is actually, anyways, Prabhupada didn't really want that. It's, it's, we do it now because we never, we didn't, we didn't create a support system for the devotees in the farms. But it's not a practical way to live a devotional life, work in a job. It's just not practical. Yeah, we mm -hmm. can... I mean, there's the, it's there in the Bhagavad Gita to some extent. Bhagavad Gita to some extent, that's there. But actually, that's also you can take the same codes and apply that to the farms. Okay, we're maintaining our material, but it's it's, it's devoting it to Krishna more in a more surrendered way. Much more favorable. Yeah. yeah. So if you can, if you're young and you have strength and you have the ability, go to the farm, serve the mission, and there's, it's more valuable than giving a little bit of your money to the temple. It's much more valuable. It's much more valuable. It's much more blissful too. Krishna, Krishna, Krishna can supply an unlimited amount of money to the temple, but a person who surrenders unto him and performs devotion service in in a, in a capable way, whether it's as a brahmachari or whether it's a grihastha on the farm, it's much more important than just thinking I'll I'll work and I'll give a little donation in that way I'll serve. That's there, but the higher thing is just to give your give give your life to the mission. Yeah. You can live, live without pollution to the best extent possible on the farm. Oh, please. oh, I have a just small comment in this regard. Anyways, just what you were saying, like, for instance, if you get diagnosed with stage three cancer, yeah. you shouldn't worry about your health. You should just chant 64 rounds, if that's the order of your spiritual master. Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yeah, the... Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. You know, one thing, thank you for uh, you know, speaking about the Bhuma Sura pastime. I completely, in my mind, I couldn't even remember it. And I also forgot that um, Kishi Krishna pulls him around and threw him. I didn't, I didn't remember reading that. There's no more Krishna killing him by gagging his mouth and his, I keep gagging his elbow and killing his mouth. And, Another point. Well, also, I, we can't. We can't hear you so well. Hey, Prabhu, I think. I, are you are you using your vehicles, mic? No, I'm using my vehicle. Oh and yeah, that. we can't. We can't understand anything you're saying. Oh, that is. Um, maybe you can say it, and then I can. Say, huh? Is this better? No, yeah. it's not. It's, it's, it's a little, little bit. bit. Yeah. Hold on. I, I can hear you.
Please. Um, you know, in that regard, just to kind of, just to, you know, it's a little bit off topic, but since we were talking about the farms, um, on the farms we have Varnashram, which means that um, although the farms, I think in society in general, primarily consist of grahasthas, mm -hmm. it's not that the farms don't have brahmacharis or the farms don't have vanaprastas or sannyasis even, mm -hmm. just to make that, just to make that point, because actually Varnashram, you have to have all of it. Good point, yeah. No, no, no. For the cities, it's Prabhupada literally more or less wanted very few grahasthas who were supporting the mission and then primarily brahmacharis and sannyasis. Farms primarily grahasthas, but both places you have actually all of them. This is important to understand. Is the ideal because and Prabhupada said, we don't know when this whole civilization is going to collapse. You look at the national debt, it's crazy. This is definitely not a sustainable way to live. It's unnatural, you know, all these consumer products, all the pollution as a byproduct of these things, the way that consumer products weaken us, weaken our ability to function without them. and It's just not a sustainable way to live. So ideally, uh, transitioning to being self-sustainable in all regards, I can hear. I can. I can understand. Let's see if I can turn this volume up. Yeah, try now. Hare Krishna. Yeah. I can hear you better. Yeah. You know, I was. I was thinking was. You know, I really wanted to chant, uh, thank Jyoti Girish Prabhu. You know, because um, I completely forgot about the whole Vyoma sort of pastime altogether. And uh, you know, I, I also spaced out about Keshi. Like Krishna twirled him around. I didn't remember that. I just remember that Krishna had gagged um, Keshi with his elbow and killed him, you know. And well, going off of what Chandan, you, you were speaking about, that if you even if you want to be a, if you're in good health, you should go to the farm and do it. Because you contribute more. <laughs> you know, like uh, dealing with says, you know, like uh, or, uh, what I'm trying to say is asking them for donations. You know, many people say, I'll donate to the temple, I'll donate to the temple, you know. But it's, it's, it just often happens that it's just like, it's like once or twice that they give a donation. After that, they feel like, we already donated so much. There's no need for us to donate anymore. It's very rare to actually find a grihas that gives 50% of his income all the institution. It's so rare to find that. 50%. I don't even know one, one grihasta, not even one, personally, I don't even, one of them gives 50% of their income to Krishna. You know, so this whole like, uh, fantastical glory of, I'll work a job and I'll give half my, I'll give a donation to the temple. You know, great, you could give a hundred bucks a month or whatever, you know, but like, giving your life is more valuable. What's the use, you know? We can go to see with books and get a hundred bucks. And then, and at least, the, and then the thing is, the Grihasa should also feel that these guys are asking me for a donation. They've given their lives, the least I can do is I can give my money. But I'm sorry, like, you know, there's so few people who actually feel like that. Far and few. You know, so there's a really important point to note. Thank you, Pooja. I think it's on. Yes. That, that was good. You guys could hear me? Yeah, yeah, we heard it. Oh, yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anything on the Mataji's side? Yes, please. So, recently I've been... Um, really studying like what it means to surrender. And I appreciate your class because you were mentioning about even um, the Bhagavad Gita verse 1866, how, you know, abandon all varieties of religion and just surrender unto me and I'll deliver you from all um, fear. 
and it made me think about one of the, um, you know, six processes of surrendering is to have firm belief in the Lord's um, ability to protect us. And in that, I'm just, I mean, for myself, I'm just thinking, like, even to believe in the Lord's, you know, protection and surrendering in that way, there still has to be some level of faith or trust in the Lord. And at least for me, it's a condition, so I know, especially in the beginning of Krishna consciousness, like, having that trust in the Lord, you know, was rather difficult because that relationship wasn't necessarily, like, intentionally built. Um, and so it just really has me reflecting on just even what the relationship is between surrender and faith when it comes to that process. Thank you, Mataji. Anything else on the Mataji side? Comment online, please. Um, oh, I don't know who this is, but okay. Um, there are many devotees who suggest working on what you studied and being Krishna consciousness at the same time. I always disagree on this. I don't understand what kind of devotees uh, they are who suggest that way. Okay. Yeah. Well, maybe it may be practical, like, say, if we have, like, such bad health that we literally can't live on the farm, we need insulin shots or, I don't know, some, some, we have some health condition that prevents us from doing that. In that case, you know, whatever we study in school may be necessary. Um, or just straight up unwillingness to do so. There are people who are unwilling. They, yeah. they cannot yeah, imagine that's a, that's going a, and living on the farm. Yeah. So even for them better they engage whatever they can and give some Lakshmi to right. the temple. Don't fry so yourself it's, it's, out. It's, yeah, I mean, ultimately to be a devotee is more important, but, um, you know, there should be some pushing. Mm -hmm. to push people to, just like we push devotees to be brahmacharis or push people to be on the farm. Yeah, you push people toward to, in Krishna consciousness, but you don't push them out of Krishna consciousness. Right. Hare Krishna, Srimad Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, Vansha Kalpa Tirapyascha Kripasantubhyevacha, Petitanam Pavane Pyo Vaishnavi Pyo Namonamaha.